consistency. We can't be kind. We can't be true. We can't be merciful. We can't be generous or honest. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Richardson. to represent Lansdowne Borough of Region 6. That is Ms. Judy's Quayland's uh, vacant position. Um, so when we get to you, just uh, say which candidate. Uh, there are two candidates, Mr. Jan Khan and Ms. Judy. Okay, you need to make sure you do it. Yeah. You can't carry over from the last oh, meeting. Sorry. So you need to solicit nominations. May I have? Oh, you can. Yeah, someone has to nominate. Okay, so. Yeah. Okay. So can someone nominate each of the candidates, please? I'll nominate um, Ms. Jamila Miller. Okay. Um, can I have a second for that? Right? A second? Yeah. A second for Ms. Miller? Second. Okay. I'll nominate Mr. Tom. Mr. I, I, I don't know if I said candidate or whatever. Mr. I nominate Mr. Tom. May I have a second? Okay. Thank you. Is Is that that you second? Sure. Oh, it's you okay. Second she second. She can second. Vote. She can second. Vote. All right. So now, uh, roll call vote. Just uh, please say your candidate. And anything else you'd like to share? Is that like that? Yeah. Do you want to do comments first? Yes. Okay. Ms. Boykins. Uh, so speaking on behalf um, of Calvin and uh, with regard to my vote. I uh, just want to state that um, Ms. Miller, I know she, Ms. Jim Miller, I know she's not here at this time, um, but we had an opportunity to be able to hear from both candidates. And I just want to state uh, Ms. Miller was a great candidate um, to pick for school board director. Uh, she has done a lot of advocacy work for our district. As you know, her name is in the fair funding lawsuit. Uh, one thing I just want to state for everyone to be clear is is that it was very hard for us to make a decision on which candidate to pick, but the issue with um, that we found was, was that the seat will be open, am I correct, for nine months. And then after that point, because there were nine months left, after that point, then the candidates would have to run. There's a certain deadline where you have to have your name and information in to be on the ballot in no. May. In May. Sorry. Thank you. In May. We found out that through this process, Ms. Miller would not be on the ballot in May. So therefore, even if we did put her in at nine months, she still would have to, she wouldn't be on the ballot in May. So we wouldn't be able to vote for her in May. We, from this also, we found out, you know, too, that Mr. Tong has been nominated from the Democratic Party. So I just wanted to state those things because I don't want anyone to feel as though that the decision on my behalf from Representative from Kyle Wynn uh, was, one, was biased or, or anything of that nature. The issue is, is that 
you want to try to find consistent board members. So we would have voted for, or I say, I would have voted for Ms. Miller. She would only be able to be on for nine months. And then from that point, Mr. Tong would run in May and he would be the one candidate to get picked because no one runs, but we will be running against him. So I just wanted to explain that um, what we're trying to look for is someone that's going to be on the board and stay on the board. But if we knew that she had not, if she would have done her paperwork, we would not have this, que this in question. So I just wanted to state that because um, I don't want anyone to think it was biased at all. Um, we, I respect Ms. Miller for everything that she's done for our school district. It's just, it comes down to paperwork, you know, and if paperwork was in, we would, I would have been able to vote um, for Ms. Miller. Just wanted to say that. Any other comments from this side of the room? Ms. Okay. Call it, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, Ms. Richardson? Tom. Ms. Boykins? Mr. Tom. Mr. Hobbs? Mr. Tom. Ms. Phillips? Mr. Tom. Ms. Hopkins? Mr. Tom. 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 Congratulations, Mr. Tom. We will swear you in at our next meeting. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you. I, I'm super excited about tonight. Uh, this is the good news part, and we have some students with us uh, to, to share some joy with us also. Uh, so first, good news. And we have a lot of it to share. Um, you know, we, we have uh, Black History Month, we have Women History Month. I decide we're having William Penn School District history every month. So we're going to start off with Lieutenant General, General Ronald S. Coleman, uh, Darby Colwin, uh, senior high school alumnus. He's the second African American in the Marine Corps to reach the three star general rank. Um, so can, uh, this one shout out is to uh, Lieutenant General Coleman. There's also a street named after him in Darby. So uh, get ready for William Penn history every month. <coughs> uh, thank you, United Way, for your volunteer engagement project at Walnut Street. Um, it's a part of the United Way's early grade literacy initiative. They sent a whole bunch of volunteers, um, and it was super fabulous. So thank you. Um, the third annual Derby Football Clinic by our own alumnus, Kamar Jordan, uh, is on May 11. Uh, sign up. You can register at DarbyYouthFootballClinic.com. Uh, it's all free uh, for ages, I want to say, 6 to 14. Uh, free lunch, free t-shirts, so go register online. It will sell out. It will free out. Uh, congratulations to the Penwood Unified Bocce team who swept all six games at the regi regionals. Congratulations. Uh, Penwood Middle School Annie was fabulous. Um, thank you to those board members and Ms. Harvard for attending. Um, our middle school students were amazing. Thank you, Ms. Jordan. Where's the dog? Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Jordan and team. Uh, it, w it was just a very prideful moment, and our children were spectacular. Uh, thank you, State Representative Joanna McClayton, who had a youth town hall at Penwood and tweeted about it. Uh, she was fabulous. She loved our children, and it was a great time. Uh, Jazz and Pasta is Friday, May 3rd at Yadin Borough Hall uh, for tickets and advertising information. Please go to penwoodband.com. Don't miss this event, it's fun. Uh, so Penwood Mock Trial Team are winners of the Delaware County and the Bucks, Chester, and Delaware Regional Trials. This Saturday, they will be attending states. They are one of only 13 teams to qualify in the entire state. Uh, so keep them in your prayers, meditations, whatever you got going on. Uh, keep this team because it is a big ball of stress. Um, and thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Schwartz for lawyering them on. But congratulations, guys. That is an outstanding bunch of young folks. Uh, kindergarten students went to Walnut Street Elementary and took a uh, tour of the Darby Borough Police Station. Thank you, Darby Borough, for uh, having us. Um, we love to go visit our neighbors. 
Ms. Blagman's class, uh, statistics class, visited QVC. Um, a special shout out to our alumni who <coughs> entered up for the trip, um, for the bus. Uh, a good time was had by all, and alumni, you made a huge difference, so it's certainly appreciated. Uh, this Saturday, March 30th at 10.30 a.m. in this room, I believe, uh, students can come learn to speak up for funding and education. Uh, so this Saturday, 10.30, if you want to learn how to advocate for yourself, uh, please come. Uh, that advocacy will work for you in many, many different ways. Uh, Penwood High School baked cookies for the Ardmore Avenue Run Like a Girl on uh, World Down Syndrome Day. Uh, it was very appreciated and the cookies were fabulous I hear. So thank you for the high school and Run Like a Girl for getting together and working for our kids. Uh, Ten years ago today, uh, these extraordinary young men won Kenwood High School's first ever PIAA class or a state basketball championships. They're usually a bunch of happier guys than this, but uh, it was a great, uh, it was a great feat, and uh, we're super appreciative of them. And we actually saw one of them last week at the career fair in Eagle. Uh, Ardmore Avenue Makerspace always have good pictures for Miss Fry of kids creating things. So thanks, Miss Fry. And the STEM Design Challenge was students from Ardmore, Walden, and the middle school. So thank you to those staffs for leading the way uh, for the Connects Challenge. Um, at the DCIU. Uh, reading night was at Ardmore Avenue. I couldn't resist those two little cuties. Um, but thanks for Ardmore, and that is a Lansdowne police officer in the background. Uh, but these girls are loving us. Uh, listening session, um, Monday, April 1st in Colwyn. That's next Monday at Colwyn Borough Hall. And the final session is May 6th in Lansdowne at the 20th Century Club. Edward High School is having career day on Tuesday, May 28th, 8.30 to 1 p.m. Uh, volunteers are wanted. Please call Ms. Lisa Cinquino at 610-284-8080. All careers are welcome. If you need me, you know where to find me. I'm always here. Uh, hashtag, we are Penwood and we are all patriots. And let's tell our story today. Thank you. Students, Walnut Street, so we have some, a guest or two or three, um, from Walnut Street Elementary. They are going to do Rubik's Cubes for us because they are super fast. Uh, any of you that got to attend the Bell Avenue uh, event, they did Rubik's Cube uh, portraits. And uh, so now they're going to come do Rubik's Cubes. Where are the Walnut Street students? Come on up. And Bella. You want to get your boat, Sam? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Put them down. You guys want to try? <laughs> Anybody want to try? Yeah. All right. Take one. What's your name? Turn around for one second. Sure What's your down. name? And where do you go to school? Great. And what's your name? I'm a day and I go to Walnut Street. Great. All right. One. Can someone time them? Anybody have a timer? Uh, no. I don't. Miss Boyd goes on it. Yeah, coach is that one. Ready? Go. Go.
four. Whoa! Keep going, guys. presentation at Bell and this was the first time I had had the opportunity to speak with Miss Ingram and uh, they had the mosaic of Martin Luther King um, and certain certain um, the, Rubik's cubes, the Rubik's cube cubes all out and I asked her I said uh, Miss Ingram why did you pick this like what were the challenges that the kids had and uh, she explained to me that it helped them understand how to get through challenge she said she picked it because some of the kids, it really helped. They came back and told her, like, you know, I'm glad I did this. And I just want to say thank you, Miss Ingram, for showing our kids that they can do it. You know, I think that's the big thing that they got from that. And that they came back and told you that is very important. So thank you for bringing this um, to Bell and getting our kids involved in it. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you guys so much. I'm so happy to have you here. That was the best. That was the best. Thank you. 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 Take the ladies. That's me. All right. All right. I think it's my turn. Okay, it's your turn. Go. It's my turn. Um, that would be the best part of the whole meeting. I'm going to let you know that. Um, uh, so thank you, students, for being here this evening to show off one of your many talents. Our students continue to demonstrate their skills throughout the district. Sometimes you've heard some of this, but it's all worth repeating. Last week, I attended the middle school play Annie. What a, what a performance, you know? Um, all the students did a remarkable job, but there were three characters that just stood out, and that was Daddy Warbucks, Annie, and Miss Hannigan. <laughs> um, and Miss Hannigan was played, yes? Sorry, can I, I'm not to leave, but I um, just wanted to say thank you for letting no. me be here. Um, and Lydia Conte, mm -hmm. she did the first day of the Annie, Play and she took the uh, um, she, uh, she she was Annie, right. but on Thursday after the play she went to the hospital, and um, she's been there since Thursday. Um, the whole left side of her body has I mean lost function, for um, so I'm going back to the hospital now to be there. So but just wanted so to let you know. Annie? Yes. So I was there on Thursday night. That was the Annie I got to see. Yes. Um, let her know that all our thoughts are with her, okay. and um, we will check up on her. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll get it from the. I'll get it from the database. Thank you. We'll so definitely put prayers in. Yes. Right. Thank you. Oh wow. Hmm. 
All right. Well, so they had two different. Yeah. Yeah. They had it. Yeah. They had always. They always had two. Oh no. So it was quite a performance, and as I said, those were the three that stood out. I think they're ready for off-Broadway. I wouldn't put them on Broadway yet, but they're ready for off-Broadway. Um, I want to say thank you to the staff that supports them every year. It is amazing what they do and how they spend the time with the students. Um, Ken, uh, you heard Mrs. Uh, Hoff talk about our Legal Eagles. If you haven't read the article, it's a great article about our team, our mock team, uh, going to... Uh, Harrisburg for the state NARC uh, trial championship. It's the first time in over 20 years that Penwood has made an appearance in the state level courtroom uh, trials. Um, so thank you to our retired staff that continues to support them. So over the past few weeks, uh, my team has been working diligently to prepare documents for the fair funding lawsuit. Um, our opposition is trying to show that we do not have adequate funding by using some of the aforementioned items, the plays, the things that we do with our children against us. They are saying, see, your students are getting more than an adequate education. Their belief is, if we can open the doors, turn on the lights, and add paper and pencils, we are providing an adequate uh, education. I sometimes wonder if that would be adequate for their own children, but that's just my thoughts. But because of our many dedicated staff members, we are consistently going beyond a basic education for our students. I wish to publicly say thank you to all the people that serve our uh, students daily and are willing to give extra time beyond their dedicated school day. So it's a real heartfelt thank you going out to you. But our next subject, um, it's March. And by June the 30th, we will need to submit to the state a balanced budget. But each year it becomes increasingly uh, more difficult to do. Tonight, school board directors, uh, I think many of you uh, have included in your folders the booklet, 2019 State of Education. Um, for the audience, I run off a two-page at a glance for you. Um, school di board directors, I um, paperclip the sections entitled School Finances for you, pages 31 through 50. Please read those and look at them. They're very, it's very easy for you to understand the difficulties that we're having. Um, in these pages, you will find from how education dollars are being spent and the financial challenges uh, facing our schools. Uh, our, over the past two years, our business manager has brought to everyone's attention our dwindling fund balance. Our auditors have continually recommended that we should maintain a fund balance that's really supposed to be between 5 and 10 percent of our expenditures. So school board directors, the fair funding lawsuit that we're leading the way on will benefit our other struggling districts also. I want you to know that. On page 50, it was interesting, I think some of you caught this already, there are 56 districts in Pennsylvania out of 501, which is 11 percent, at zero or negative fund balances. Since 2012, 394 districts have lower fund balances than they've ever had before, which is 79% of the state has. Uh, so we're all seeing our uh, finances going down and dwindling. Um, those of you who are in the audience, if you got the review at a glance uh, document, I just want to quickly go through this. Um, what are the top three challenges we face in districts? It's 75% is getting a budget prepared. 45% of our pressure is making sure our schools are safe and, and the security in our schools. And 21% that we is a top challenge that um, people identify across the districts says that we are looking at how do we maintain our buildings? How do we get the facilities uh, and stay? Or if we need new construction? So those are the top three pressures that superintendents talk about and, and school board directors. What are the top five pressures in budgets? 59% is the pension costs that we have. 55% is charter, um, people say charter school tuition. 45% is special education. 38% is inadequate state funding. And 22% is health insurance. How do most districts balance their budget? Here are the top five ways. I feel like, who is it? Yeah. Yeah. 72% um, of school districts will rely on local taxes, property taxes, to help balance their budgets. 71% of the districts will start 
drawing from their fund balances, but you can't continue to draw from your fund balances. 38% of school districts will reduce staff, 35% will increase class sizes, and 24% will look at reducing programs and services for their students. What's killing us on the back is mandated expenses. Um, if you see um, our what we had to pay in 2011, the cost of uh, pensions has uh, gone up by 418%. Those of us who are math people know that's not supposed to be logical, but 418% increase in uh, what we're paying in pensions across the state and 72% increase with our charter school tuitions. Um, what's our biggest worry is health, uh, making sure our schools are safe. 79% uh, say we are not meeting the mental health challenges of our students, and we would like to look at how we can do that. So this is just an easy read, gives you what we worry about at night, and um, how we have to work and stay with the state with this fair funding lawsuit and making sure that we actually go forward and win. So that is my report this evening, Madam President. Thank you, Ms. Harbour. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the agenda? So we we'll move. Second. Any uh, questions or changes? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Uh, may I have a motion to approve the minutes from the business meeting of February 25th, 2019? Sure. Any questions or changes? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, anyone against? Uh, may I have a motion to approve the minutes from the committee meeting of the whole, March 18th, 2019? So Any questions or changes? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? All right, uh, Ms. Samuel. Samuel. Oh, Ms. Tom's going first. <laughs> Trick me out, it's okay. At last, month's, you, at last month's board meeting, Bill was acknowledged for a leadership award from Widener. I want to congratulate Lo for getting this leadership award. Tomorrow is the day she received the award at Widener University. Last Tuesday, the softball team was told to get changed in the portable outside of Cyprus. Both JV and Varsity were, were to get changed in this building, building. I spoke to admin at Cyprus and my coaches, and the response was conflicting. The portable was not fit to have the girls change in. There were no shades over the windows, and the bathrooms had no doors. The walls had holes throughout the building, and the floor was wet. We're asking that the space we can change and, and move into, onto practicing, are suitable. If you would like the pictures of the portable, they are available, and I can send them to you. Thank you. We'll take care of that immediately, correct? Why couldn't it be changed at, in the gym at Cyprus? Evans, I'll, I'll find it. Evans is still using it until 3.30. That might be the conflict. There's a bathroom. Yeah, there's, there's a bathroom. We'll figure it out. Changing it. That won't happen again. I apologize if that happens. Um, Okay. Hello everyone. Um, first, I want to start off by saying a huge thank you. Um, this Widener Apology Scholarship Award would not be available if I wasn't offered this position on the board. This position has taught me a lot about leadership and um, personal responsibility. So without this position, I wouldn't be able to have the ability to get awards like that. Um, I want to say a huge thank you to all the administration, Ms. Hoff and Ms. Herbert, because if it weren't for them, then the track would it, the track team wouldn't be able to go out to nationals where we competed. We left Pennsylvania number seven in the four by 200 meter relay and Pennsylvania number four in the four by 400 meter relay. We PR'd in both events, came back Pennsylvania number four, and if counted, Pennsylvania number two in the four by four. And that would have not been available. If you yeah. And the second thing 
thing I want to say is I just want to give a shout out to my our jazz band. They play Superior, which is the highest ranking at Westchester University. Even though they were missing me, the one trombone player, they were still able to succeed. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to give a huge shout out to them. And that's Great, it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you. You are not alone all by yourself. And uh, what is championships for jazz? I'm thinking about you. All right. <laughs> all right. Yes, ma'am. Um, so when at Wagner, mm -hmm. um, is it a public? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what time? Uh, it's in the morning from 7:30 to I believe 9. It's actually going to be at the Constitution Center in Philadelphia. Yeah. yeah. Ah. So this is tomorrow. Yeah, this is tomorrow morning. Yeah. Oh, it's 7.30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She'll say yeah. I heard. I heard. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Special awards, none. Uh, public comments regarding agenda items. Seeing none. Uh, any communications, Mr. Cobb? No, ma'am. All right, committee reports. Ms. Phillips, community relations, please. Um, A1, William Penn School District listening sessions continue. Um, they were in the announcements, but um, for those who missed it, the, the one at Colwyn is coming up um, on Monday, April 1st at Colwyn Borough Hall. Um, and then in May, Lansdowne is having theirs at the 20, 20th Century Club. But these are for everyone to come out to, and this is for parents, community, teachers, students. Um, we really. What's that? There's refreshments. And there's refreshments, <laughs> chips and soda. And it's, a, it's actually been a really amazing chance to, to talk more in depth with each other. And we have an outside facilitator who's just been awesome. Um, so really hope um, if you haven't made it to one yet, come to these next two. And really, you don't have to be a resident of the particular. Um, A2, Give Kids a Smile, Children's Dental Access Program. Um, and so this is happening April 15th through 22nd. PCCY is, is sponsoring this event, um, and you can start calling them April 1st to make appointments. The information is in the agenda um, for how to get in touch with PCCY to set up an appointment. A3, Penwood High School students excel at speech and debate tournament. Um, so Penwood High School speech and debate team com competed in the District 10 speech competition of the Pennsylvania High School speech leagues qualifying competition at Periton High School in February, and more than 150 Pennsylvania public and private schools are members of this. Um, and so the highlights from, from the event were um, Martinique Shaw placed uh, first in humorous interpretation, um, Ashay Henry and Daniel Ellis placed first in duo interpretation, um, Charlene Canning placed second in Lincoln Douglas debate, Naheem Lark placed second in humorous interpretation, and Miles Richardson placed second in persuasive speaking. So, a lot of, a lot of great accomplishments there. A4, the Penwood Marching Band Boosters present Jazz and Class Night, which Jen first spoke about in the announcement. Um, it's coming up on May 3rd, so you can buy tickets in advance. Um, A5, Lansdowne Upper Darby Rotary Club March Student of the Month Awards. Um, at Penwood High School, Christabel Bonsu and Nigel Ray were selected as Students of the Month for March 2019. Students are chosen based on academic performance, leadership skills, and participation in extracurricular activities. And there's some beautiful bios here uh, you can read more. A6, Girls Sparks Free Conference for High School Girls. Girls Sparks is a retreat for high school girls created by high school girls in collaboration with the Delaware County Women's Commission and an adult steering committee. This is the first annual retreat, and it's on April 6th from 11 to 4 um, at Delaware County Community College. So there's details in here for how to, how to get involved. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Phillips. Any comments? Okie dokie. Uh, Education Committee, Ms. Boykins, please. Uh, B1, homebound instruction. B2, termination of homebound instruction. B3, release and settlement agreement and third party education trust. B4, Artmore Avenue Elementary School, sixth grade student trip to the Funplex in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. B5, Bell Avenue Elementary School, sixth grade student trip to the Funplex in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Uh, B6, Park Lane Elementary School's first and second grade student trip to Adventure Aquarium in Camden, New Jersey. Uh, B7, the, William, the Pimwood, I'm sorry, the Pimwood Wise Program. 
2019 trip to Paris, France, and Barcelona, Spain. And B8, summary of recent presentation um, at school board co uh, committee meetings. Uh, and, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, education meeting was held on February 26, 2019. A representative from the Department of Environmental Protection spoke. Uh, the great thing about the program that they're trying to bring in for the, the Department of Environmental Protection is, is, is getting uh, wastewater management testers. Uh, so this is something that uh, they're trying to bring into uh, our school district in order for our kids to be able to take classes at DCC and or even here and also acquire a certification so when they graduate they're able to be water testers and also doing other things with at water waste treatment pro, um, facilities. The great thing about this also is, is that the kids uh, will be certified and they can come out making in between the range of starting $30,000 all the way up to $100,000. So it's a very something very beneficial. Also, uh, the Department of Environmental Protection said that they would also speak to parents that may be um, interested um, in becoming or getting jobs um, also with that department. So um, just thank them for definitely coming out. Um, also, the next meeting for uh, education meeting will be tomorrow um, at 6.30 p.m. Uh, where we'll have some uh, more representation come out from the young men and women in charge. They'll be coming out um, speaking on STEM. Uh, we are looking to bring some more STEM activity um, into the William Penn School District. Even though I know we have a lot of it now, uh, we're looking for uh, this organization to come in and see what they can offer um, to our students. So I'm urging everyone to please come out uh, tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we'll be going over some more things with our education and also special special education as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Boyd, for the motion. Yeah, well, I need a second. Second. You can't second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> second. A second. Any uh, questions <laughs> or any comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor? Uh, anyone against? All right, Mr. Hobbs, personnel subbing in for Mr. Wright. And we're going through C1 through C9, I think. C1 is resignation. C2, appointments, runs through 11 over to 12. C3 is tenure award. C4, <coughs> salary check changes. Over to page 14, C5, leaves of absences. C6, that's an informational item about the diversity and minority subcommittee meeting. On page 15, C7, appointment. These were additions to the agenda. C8, salary track change. C9, leaves of absences. That will end that. Great, thank you. May I have a second, please? Thank you. Um, any questions or, or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against? Great. Uh, property, I'll read. Um, oh, no, sorry, Mr. Hobbs, go for it. I was going to read it. I'm sorry. Oh, so uh, that's D1, I know. D1, I know. I've got to say, come on. <laughs> D1 Community Partner Playground Agreement. Uh, this is to approve the Community Partner Playground Agreement with Kaboom for playground equipment at Walnut Street Elementary School. This agreement is subject to review and approval by the district solicitor. Okay, do you have a question? No. All right, can I have a first, because I can't move it? Yes, we move. I'll move it. Thank you, can I have a second? Thank you. Any questions from the board? Yeah, the, this is the same one from? Yeah, last week. Okay. Because we, we don't vote. We read at last meeting and we vote at this meeting. Yeah, but, okay, never mind. All, right. all, right. um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against? All right, thank you. And I just want to be clear, this does not mean that we have been gifted the playground yet. That's what I was, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. What I was trying yeah. to get to. Yeah, so this does not mean we've been gifted. That means we've done the pre-work. They have our applications. We've had a long phone call with them. Uh, keep your fingers crossed because we want it. We still would have to raise the 85, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Which will be no problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we, we'll figure that out. The playground has a value of about 120,000. Okay. So we're just asked to have some skin in the game. No problem. All right. Uh, budget and finance, Ms. Richardson, please. Dave Wise, the treasurer, report. 
E2 Elizabeth Bills, E3 is a Delaware County Community Unit, Unit 2019-2020 General Operating Budget. And that's for the total amount of the budget is a little more than $9 million. And there was an increase of roughly $210,000. And this is a portion that's estimated between the 14 other county districts. And we will not know for the actual amount of the Realm Penn School District cost because that will come from the Department of Education. So it could be slightly less or more than the estimate. E4 is your summary of recent budget and finance committee meeting. We did have a meeting on March 12, 2019. The main topics were anticipated expenditures for 2019-2020. And I'm working on a date for another meeting in the near future, which we will announce later. Thank you. E5 is your, it's an addition to the gender, and that's uh, Delaware County Intermediate Unit Special Education 2019-2020. But great. Uh, may I have a second, please? Second. Great. Uh, any questions from the board? Um, not a question. I just, um, for general public, those that have missed the uh, budget meeting, we gave out some very important information. I just wanted to know, um, could you speak on it quick, briefly, just a recap of what we discussed a little bit in our um, budget and finance meeting? Because I think it was concerning to us, and I think it will be concerning to the public to hear um, where we are at financially and things that are going on, just to give them a brief synopsis of how we made it. do you want to do that? Or I think uh, they spoke briefly on that the costs and expenditures, but I'm sure this topic go into detail about. Sure. Um, so what we did was hit, we had a brief discussion where we started off was um, where we ended up last year. So last year we ended up with roughly a 1.4 million dollar fund balance, which was a decrease of roughly slightly over 300 thousand dollars, and what we what we talked about was that we have to keep in mind that we're trending in a negative direction as far as using fund balance. So if we don't have a budget that addresses some of our revenue needs and tries to contain some of our expenditure needs, we're actually going to wind up using more and more fund balance and wind up in a either deficit position or a zero position or fund balance. And this is kind of what Jane alluded to. In her report. So we talked about some of the major expenditures that are coming up. And again, with every budget, and particularly in a budget like a school district, your major expenditures will be your salaries, your benefits. But we have other expenditures, and again, this, this is kind of a recap of what Jane just talked about. It's going to be our pension costs, it's going to be the charter school costs, it's going to be the security costs um, that are tied with it. So the major concept that we came out of that meeting with was that we make a budget that is realistic, that addresses our needs, and something that we can sustain over the course of a couple of years. And that we, um, so that, that's going to be the big obstacle this year. It's, it's always a battle, and it's always a challenge for us to get to that point. But the, it's going to be us making a budget that is sustainable, that we can accomplish all the needs to educate the children, keep everyone safe. Thank you, Mr. Sorry. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Uh, may I have, so I have a second. Um, all those in favor? Uh, Aye. Anyone against? All right, uh, policy committee, there is nothing on the agenda. Uh, next month we'll have the affirmative action to approve the new affirmative action policy. Uh, solicitor's report? Uh, we have a brief executive session discussing under ongoing litigation. Great. Any old business, Mr. Cobb? No, ma'am. All right, uh, new business. Uh, this is the resolution urging the General Assembly to adequately invest in public schools. Um, and I'll just read it quickly. Pennsylvania's more than 1.7 million public school students deserve the highest quality education and the resources to give all students the opportunities they need to succeed. Pennsylvania ranks 46 amongst the 50 states in the amount of state sub subsidies allocated to support elementary elementary and secondary education with the state share of funding public education at 38%. Pennsylvania has the widest funding gap 
between wealthy and poor school districts of any state in the country. The state has failed to keep pace with the rising cost of mandated special ed education for students with disabilities, which has increased by $1.6 billion over the last decade. Even as the state's share of the cost has fallen from 36% to 25%, the state has failed to keep pace with the cost of providing career and technical education pathways to students, allowing its share of CTE funding to fall to 8% leaving school districts with a 90% share of the CTE budget. Inadequate state funding places an additional burden on local taxpayers to pick up a greater share of public schools' costs to ensure that our students' education is not jeopardized. The state must make greater sustainable investments in public schools to lift all students and prepare them for today's competitive workforce. The William Penn School District Board of School Board Directors urges the General Assembly to take legislative action for public education by increasing ba basic education funding through the state's fair funding formula, ensuring sufficient resources for special education and career and techno technical education, and generating the necessary revenues through sustainable recurring, recurring funding sources. The motion is to adopt the resolution as indicated above. So moved. We have second. a second. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against? Great. Mr. Cuff will put that up on yes. where it's supposed to go. Thank you. Um, report, uh, no report from Delaware County uh, Community College from Mr. Wright. Uh, Ms. Fiddy is also absent for the Delaware County Intermediate Unit uh, report. Uh, Legislative Council. Uh, Legislative Council keeps on humming. There are no shortage of bills for us to look at. Uh, there is a bill that we would uh, be mandated to teach every child uh, before they graduate CPR. Um, that is an amazing idea with no funding. Um, so uh, there are also some other bills floating around, but really no movement. But. Um, I will keep you abreast of all future bills and <coughs> anything I see coming. I do want to, uh, we had a visit from Senator Carney on Friday. He spent three hours with us. Um, he was in this boardroom with the leadership team, uh, and then he went to East Lansdowne Elementary and Ardmore Avenue Elementary. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Alden <laughs> Elementary, and uh, I was in the A's. And, uh, and he was thoughtful and asked a lot of questions. Um, we are super appreciative of him and his team's time, and we have lots of work to do. Uh, any comments from citizens regarding non-agenda items? Anyone? Yes? Uh, hi, my name is Joe Forsyth. I'm a English teacher at the middle school. I wanted to comment, if I could, um, upon the Current English um, language arts curriculum search for me. I've written a letter. Do you mind if I, I want to read it very shortly? Um, so, hey, Mr. Ops. I think this is enough copy right now. Um, so, quickly, my name is Joe Forsyth. Um, I've been serving as both high school and middle school English teacher in the district for the past three years. Uh, and I'm writing in regards to the piling of new ELA curriculum at the middle school for the upcoming 2019 2020 school year. To be clear, uh, I am speaking for myself. I am not speaking for any other teacher. Um, I do not presume to speak for any other teacher, and I, nor to know what might be best to other buildings. Um, so I was hired from middle school in 2016, and so I've seen the effects of scripted curriculum on the fabric of our school. From my perspective, the Sex for All curriculum framework was brought into the ELA department to address two concerns. One, the concerns of parents and teachers that our kids were entering high school without the necessary reading skills, and two, the concern that we need our test scores to improve in order to ward off the negative attention of the Commonwealth. However, well intentioned, the scripted curriculum has not solved these two problems and has, in fact, added further ones. Uh, there is now a committee that has been working to choose another program to replace SFA. However, I argue this search for ideas from outside of our district is unnecessary. We, the district's whole, do not need, I think, a scripted program to help us improve test scores. We do not need publishing companies to decide the skills that our students need in order to create meaningful lives. 
Uh, we do not need outside companies to tell us which texts are best to challenge our students and enrich their lives, nor how best to teach your reading skill. In short, I would like to propose that instead of giving money to Hot and Mifflin, Mifflin Harcourt, for example, or Prentice Hall, um, we allow the teachers and the coaches within the middle school the discretion to choose texts and skills to teach our students. Uh, I propose a thematic approach to texts that will allow students to connect their understandings across subjects. Uh, I know that money will make a very simple and um, objection that uh, this is there's too much time. There's not enough time. That is, this will take too much time. However, I'd argue that we already have a built-in thematic framework in place at the middle school. Specifically, we could use two grade level themes that already exist in the social studies department. Seventh grade would focus on world cultures, while eighth grade would focus on themes within American studies. Uh, in this way, we can build upon what is already in existence rather than continuing a cycle where we bring in something new and improved every few years. Um, I think that we have, in a sense, confused sort of what is, what is expedient um, for what is good, and I really uh, hope that you consider my arguments and decide to take this responsibility back for ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I'm happy to Mr. McKay behind you. Can you give a copy to Mr. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we will uh, reflect on it. It's a lot to swallow real quick um, and, and get back to you. And so maybe pull back. Do you want to have something to share, Ms. Quicken? Nothing. Okay. All right. Um, anyone else for public comment? Yes, Mr. Carpenter? Okay, uh, since your solicitor last mentioned a lawsuit involving Carpenter, Evans, and Brown during the last board meeting, um, for some reason, court documents have been printed out on school district copiers. We found them. For some reason, during the last in service, members of the high school took it upon themselves to debate whether Libby Brown, Kim Evans, and Randy Carpenter were trying to bankrupt the district and how we should all work against them. So I'm sure, I'm not, you know, I don't think you guys do that on purpose, but that's what's been going on. And if you check with the high school, it went on during the last uh, <coughs> language meeting amongst the language teachers. They debated on whether, you know, we were, you know, it's just all types of nonsense. So the thing is, it places us in a predicament with our colleagues, and we have these random questions coming up and for me to see my litigation on the <laughs> district printer, and I know it came from the district printer because it has the black line through it because of our printers. I mean, it's just total nonsense. Um, second thing, we talked about athletes set the example, you know, for the whole 30 days, 60 days thing, but when are we going to set the example as board and central amen? If you have an administrator who tells you they're going to be in a building and they're not there, or an administrator that tells you and puts things in the board minutes that do not exist, such as child guidance, behavior plans, FBAs, when would they be held accountable? We can't hold the kids accountable if we don't set the precedent as adults and hold the adults accountable. The other thing, um, the trailers. Did you know that we're paying $1,300 a month for a trailer that's not being used over at Cypress <coughs> that's covered in weeds right now, the home of the former new school? That, those have not been occupied in the last two years. So if anyone wants the data, I can give it to them because I just ran the data based on your trash reports for the last two years. And in total, we've spent over $50,000 on trailers. But the thing is, half of that went to Park Lane. Dr. Watson Bowie uses her trailers because she has such a large population. However, um, the Cypress trailers have not been occupied in two years, and you're paying a minimum of $1,300 a month. So on the Cypress trailers a month, you spend $23,419 and $15 in less than two years. If you want me to go back further, I can, but you spend a minimum of $1,300 every year. And all you have to do, I mean $1,300 every month, and all you have to do is go to your um, treasury report, look up William Scotsman trailer rental, 10 2690-449-000-000 at Pennwood CSC, 181-900-164. You're still, you just paid 1300 last month for trailers that no one's in and they're covered by weeds. 
Um, so I just wanted to give you that as well. And also, no matter what, when we talked about the whole issue with the park lane, the fact of the matter is, Dr. Watson Bowie was there. But during your summer sessions, and I'm ignoring that, um, your special ed admin told you they would be at the ESY program, right? And for over two weeks, they were not there, which left no administrator there, which means they sat in front of you as a board and lied to you all because they said they were going to be there. Now, if you check your logs and everything, they took vacation at the same time and there was no third administrator hired yet. Therefore, there was no administrator in that building. So thank God Dr. Watson Boy is where she belonged because if something would have happened at that ESY program, you had no administrator. They were both on vacation at the same time. So we want to hold you accountable. Let's set the precedent as adults. If the adults, we got to hold the adults accountable. They told you child guidance and behavior plans, FBAs, and in five years, it increased every year, right? No data, right? But you know, I'm just, you know, as a board, we need to hold those adults accountable. If we're going to question the kids, question the adults. Because luckily we have somebody like Dr. Watson Bowie that's actually in attendance at her building, whereas the, those special education director and supervisor, nowhere to be found. Reactive, right? First proactive. And thank you very much. And for my questions that will be answered within one week, what was the new school? When was the new school relocated from the Penwood High School CSC trailer? What prompted the relocation? And last but not least, what is the current status of the Penwood High School CSC trailer? And I also looked it up online, um, Madam President, and there's no such thing as a new school. When I looked at your special ed director's budget, um, uh, whatever, what do you call it? They, we don't use them anymore, but they use them. The, uh, what's it called, PowerPoint. There was no mention of the new school. However, they told you they had two teachers, one instructional assistant, and one child guidance therapist, what, for 10 or 11 kids? Now, if you think about that, that's over a quarter million dollars spent on what? And they never presented it to you. So we're going to hold the children accountable. It's only right we hold the adults accountable. Thank you very much, Mr. Carpenter. No problem. All right, we'll get back to you, please. All right, anyone else? I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Forsyth. 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 I just I didn't want to no, say your fine. name incorrectly. I just had a few questions. I had stepped out to use the restroom um, and then came back, and I just had the time to read your letter. Sure. Um, first and foremost, I just want to ask, was this sent prior to us? Like It was not. You just got it handed to So you just got it handed. Okay, and the second question I have for you is, are you a part of the focus group for the ELA? Was I am not. I was not able to do that. You were not able to do it? or you, oh, you, Okay. Okay. Well, okay. well, my, well, Mr. Forsyth. It was open, but I couldn't do it. Okay, so Mr. Carpenter, can you allow him to speak for himself, sorry, though? Come on, let's be respectful, okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm sorry. So I, I just wanted to know that because I'm, I'm the chair of education, and I always talk to Mr. McKay about like things that are going on, and I just wanted to find out exactly, you know, were you a part of the focus group or not? So, I was not. Okay, you're not a part of the focus group. Um, the other question I had uh, was I, I'm reading the part with regard to – is it that you don't want us to purchase a program and you want to base off of our needs that we already have? Like, for instance, we know our needs. Like, it seems like in this letter, you're stating what the needs are. We already know that. So you're saying, why go out and purchase a program or purchase a curriculum when we can set the curriculum ourselves? Is that what you're saying? In essence, yes. The, the one presentation that I have seen in this room from Prentice, uh, Hot Mifflin Harcourt, um, it struck me that what they were saying we should purchase from them yeah. was a collection of short stories. It was a collection of texts, okay. essentially, with skills embedded in them um, that, it, to my mind, there was, nothing, there was nothing special about them. They were tied together thematically, okay. um, which is a wonderful idea and something that 
you know, English teachers have known and social studies teachers, humanities teachers known for years is good for kids and good for learning. Um, but we have those, you know, in, in existence with uh, seventh grade social studies, eighth grade social studies. We have, you know, a way that we could essentially become uh, um, humanities based instead of them being separated. Okay. Um, so coming up with a list of novels, short stories, poems, informational texts, all those things are not easy to do, mm -hmm. um, but that is possible for us to do. Okay. And then we wouldn't have to go back each year that this informational text in that textbook is now old. It's, you know, um, if we're reading, <laughs> if we're reading uh, A Long Walk to Water, for example, about uh, conflict in South Sudan anomaly, yes. um, if we purchase something, then it's an evolving story. And so the next year, that article you might be reading from this giant textbook, for example, is outdated. Whereas I could go on the internet, find something, we could have, you know, we already have, um, uh, through our library system, we already have uh, access to news databases for informational articles. Mm -hmm. um, so we have those resources. Uh, and we know the skills that we need to focus on. Okay. Um, obviously all of that takes time to put together, and that's why it's easy, right, to go out and, and purchase something. Um, but at the same time, it costs money, of course, uh, and then it's more difficult to change to suit the situation that's in front of you as a teacher and as a building. So you know we're looking at several different, not just one, you know, we look at several different products. And I understand that, and I, I apologize that I don't have like, the greatest scope because I'm not a part of that. From from my one perspective, seeing that one example and then just sort of talking to people here and there. Okay. I I, um, I hope that uh, you could, you know, sit in on a focus group or, you know, talk to Mr. McKay a little more. I mean, I has anyone tried your idea yet? Have you heard of districts trying your idea? <coughs> or doing, because I'm just asking because to me, it's, I sat here and read the letter and I'm going to take time to read it again, you know, and find out are there districts out here doing it, you know, but has it, do you know of a district that has tried it in that way without a, a curriculum bought from, you know, hardcore or anything like that? Yeah, I think that wouldn't be a problem to find someplace else, specifically in Delaware or Montgomery counties or Chester counties, I think. Okay. Well, I just want to say for me, thank you very much for providing your letter and thank you for your feedback and your input. Um, and I definitely appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Forsyth, did you sit through a presentation of Hardcore this year? I did, maybe two months ago. Okay, All right. thank you. Anyone else? All right, uh, education meeting in this room tomorrow night at 6.30. Uh, the next meeting the committee of the whole will be on Tuesday, April 15th at 6.30. And the next business meeting of the Board of School Board Directors will be 7.30 on April 22nd. Um, there will be a couple of uh, meetings coming at you. Uh, Ms. Richardson is going to decide on a date for budget. Maybe not April 15th after the April 15th. Maybe. Um, and uh, we will be talking about our next superintendent search meeting, so we'll be sure to get that date out to you. And I will be in touch with the school board directors to talk about some dates for a strategic plan meeting, um, a board borough meeting, a board training, and a super review plan. Okay? Okay, we can do the budget meeting on it. All right, so Jeff, can we do that? All right, um, motion to adjourn? So Second? All those in favor? Aye. Have a good night. Yes, sir.